Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to plot various time functions for a swinging pendulum. Really this is good for any simple harmonic oscillator, not just a pendulum. But it, we'll see, uh, we'll be plotting the displacement of the pendulum bob as a function of time. We'll plot its tangential velocity as a function of time. We'll be plotting its tangential acceleration as a function of time. And we'll compare the phase differences between these three graphs. Okay, so to begin, I have axes for displacement versus time already set up for this pendulum. The maximum displacement from the zero position is A and negative A. So positive A will be on the right, negative A is on the left, and every fourth of a time value for my period is indicated with dashed lines. So let's go ahead and make a graph. Uh, we're going to be plotting the pendulum, and at t equals 0, the pendulum is in the middle. It is in the 0 position of its trajectory. So let's see what happens as we oscillate the graph. Pendulum reverses and comes back to the 0 position. Okay, so we can see at maximum position here, that's when the pendulum bob was up. So this is my positive displacement. And for my negative maximum, or my minimum displacement, I'd say it's over here on the left. And this is my zero position right here in the middle. And I can see that this is a sine function. This is one fourth of the way through the period. Half the way through the period, the pendulum is back to center. 75% of the way through the period, the pendulum is at the minimum uh, displacement value, and a full cycle is where the pendulum returns to start. And if I want to relate this to radians, one-fourth of the period is pi over 2, half the period is pi, 75% of the period is 3 pi over 2, and a full period is 2 pi. And I could even give a, uh, an equation for this function. I could say that the displacement with respect to time is the amplitude of the sine wave times sine of omega t, where omega is the angular frequency, but we don't really have to go into that. You can relate the angular frequency here using um, uh, the radians. So now let's see what happens when we want to plot the velocity versus time graph. All right, on this slide, we're going to generate our graph of velocity versus time. And you'll notice I've carried over from the previous slide my equation for displacement with respect to time. And this is not yet my velocity graph. This is still just the displacement graph, but I'm going to show you how we generate the velocity versus time graph by shifting this to the left by pi over 2. First thing I do is I note uh, important places, places that are obvious to me on the graph. So my graph has a maximum amplitude at pi over 2. This maximum amplitude is going to shift. It's going to be shifted to the left by pi over 2. So I'm going to put the amplitude, the maximum amplitude, right here on the y-axis. I have a zero point at pi. I need to shift this to the left by pi over 2. So I'm going to have my new zero point will be here. I have a minimum displacement value at 3 pi over 2. I'm going to shift this to the left by pi over 2 and put the new displacement, I mean the new minimum amplitude will go right here. And at 2 pi, which completes my cycle, I'm at a 0. So for the velocity, I'm going to shift this here to the 3 pi over 2. And then to complete the function, uh, uh, to complete one cycle of the function, I'll have to continue my line up until it reaches the 2 pi. So let's go ahead and move this graph to the left by pi over 2 to generate velocity versus time. So there we go, we moved it to the left and then I continue my line up and bam. So this isn't perfect, I made this graph in Word so this amplitude should actually be right over the 2 pi, but uh, it's okay. Velocity is the time derivative of displacement, so I'm going to take the displacement and derive it with respect to time, and I get this function. The derivative of sine is cos, cosine, 
and then I multiply by the derivative of what's inside the trig function. In this case, the derivative of omega t is omega. You don't need to know this, but omega is the angular frequency. And the maximum velocity can then be found, can be calculated by multiplying the amplitude by the angular frequency. Again, this isn't something you need to know for the course. I'm just including this for completion. I'm not including uh, the phi symbol, which looks like this. You might see this later on in college. The phi denotes a phase shift right at the start of the graph. In this case, I'm not going to worry about it, but you might see it later. I'm just leaving it off for simplicity. So to recap for this, cosine lead sine by pi over 2. As we can see, I shifted this graph to the left, my original sine function to the left by pi over 2. We say it leads. We say that cosine lead sine because at t equals 0, cosine has a max. At t equals 0, sine is at a min. So that's why we say it leads. The velocity leads displacement by pi over 2 or 1 fourth the period. So just note that always the derivatives lead the functions and the functions lag the derivatives. But we'll see that again later on. Coming up on the next slide, I will show you then how to get your acceleration versus time graph from this velocity versus time graph. Okay, so on this slide, we have our acceleration versus time, or we will, because if you notice, this is still my velocity versus time graph. So in order to generate my graph for acceleration versus time, I need to shift the points on this graph over by pi over two. So I make sure to shift this position at where we have a zero. This gets shifted to the left by pi over two. I'm gonna switch, use my highlighter because it's easier to write with. So this position is going to end up right here at the start. This maximum position, which is at pi, is going to end up right here at the pi over 2. This position where I have a 0 at 3 pi over 2 is going to end up right here at the pi. And then this position, which should be at the t, at the 2 pi, which is one full period, is going to be shifted here to 3 pi over 2. And what, what I'll then have to do is just uh, draw a line extending down to complete my cycle, because a cycle is a full 2 pi. Notice I've left up my functions. My displacement function is still here, and my velocity function is still here. And I remember that the uh, derivative of displacement is velocity and the derivative of sine is cosine and I also have to take the derivative of whatever is inside of the function and that the derivative of omega t with respect to t is omega. Omega is the angular frequency. We don't need to know that for this course and the velocity, the maximum velocity is found at the amplitude value times the uh, angular frequency. So let's now shift this graph over to the left so I can generate my acceleration versus time. Boop, just like that. And then I extend the graph down and there we have it. I have now completed a cycle for the acceleration versus time in 2 pi. So we know that the um, time derivative of velocity is acceleration. So I can generate this graph here. My acceleration is the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of omega t. My amplitude is still out in front. I have to take the derivative of what's inside. And that, again, the derivative of omega, is, of omega t is omega. So this becomes negative a omega squared sine omega t. Uh, the maximum acceleration is given by negative amplitude times the angular frequency squared. You don't, we don't need to know that for this course, but just in case. Note that negative sine leads cosine by pi over 2. That also means acceleration leads the velocity by pi over 2, or 1 fourth the period. And acceleration will lead the displacement by pi, or half of the period. On the final slide, 
I'm going to show present all three uh, graphs, displacement versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time, so we can compare their phase differences. So on this slide, you can see that I have all three time graphs for my simple harmonic oscillator, the pendulum in this case. I have displacement versus time, the velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. First thing, again, velocity is the time derivative of displacement. So I can see when my displacement was at zero, which is at the zero position right here, my velocity has a maximum value. You should remember that from pre-IB physics. I choose the positive direction to be towards the right and the negative direction to be towards the left. So as the velocity moves, I'm sorry, as the pendulum moves, it achieves its maximum displacement and velocity falls from its max to zero. Notice that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So up here, when velocity was at its maximum value, the slope of velocity is zero. So the acceleration at the zero position is zero. As velocity slows to zero, velocity is zero when the uh, amplitude of the displacement is max. When the velocity slows to zero, the acceleration increases to its maximum value. The slope of the velocity is negative, so the acceleration has negative values here. It should make sense. Functions lag their derivatives. They lag their derivatives by uh, phi, pi over 2. So to generate my velocity graph from displacement, I moved the displacement graph to the left by pi over 2. And to get my acceleration graph from velocity, I moved the velocity graph to the left by pi over 2. Notice that acceleration and displacement are opposites. So my displacement graph in this example was a positive sine function. And my acceleration graph in this example is a negative sine function. These two are out of phase with each other by a full pi. Acceleration leading my displacement by pi. So if I was given a displacement graph and I needed to make acceleration, I would need to shift my displacement over by half of its period, or pi. Finally, the IBO expects you to be able to draw all of these phase difference for any type of simple harmonic oscillator. It's not hard. Just remember, uh, the derivative is ahead by pi over 2 to draw it. You move the original graph to the left by pi over 2, and acceleration and displacement are separated by a phase difference of Hi, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and study well.